Hello, Bogdan Nahailo, Chief Editor of the Kiev Post, inviting you to another session with our latest guest, a special guest all the way from Norway, Harald Umland. Thank I you. hope I'm pronouncing it right. <laughs> yeah, that's good. Enough. Harald is a great friend of Ukraine. He's just taken another party of humanitarian assistance to the east, to the front lines, to the soldiers and to the children out there. He'll tell us more about that. But he's also got a very special project, I would say even an obsession, that we're going to be talking about. Harold, welcome again to our studio of Kyiv Post in Kyiv. Thank you for being here. Okay, quickly about uh, how many times now have you been delivering uh, humanitarian aid to um, the victims of war and to the soldiers out in, in the east of Ukraine since the war started? This, this was the 10th run. The 10th uh, run. Yeah, and the first two, three run was to Kyiv region because it was in March, April 2022. And then in the autumn, we start the run after um, Kharkiv was liberated, Kherson was liberated. We started with longer run and longer help because it was needed. So why? Why this commitment to Ukraine, a Norwegian? <sighs> it's, a di it's a difficult question and I asked myself this. It's it somehow, when the war's full-scale war started, you shoved something I thought it was I thought not was possible. This this bravery, this determination, this we want to fight. It took me by by a little bit surprise, and I had long connections to Ukraine from 2014. So I thought it's time to help. And you're an ex-military man. You were in Norwegian forces with the UN, I understand. Yeah, I was in the army, officer schools and stuff like that in eight years. And I was also in the Middle East for a period. So you've seen war. And how would you compare war and conflicts that you've seen with what you've seen in Ukraine? What I have seen don't compare to this at all. This is, this is a, a real war for survival and it's totally different. It's, it's like more what we read about in history, like the First World War or something like that. Now, in Norway, your colleagues, your friends, do they understand and support what you do to help Ukraine? Yeah, most of Norwegians support Ukraine and what we do. But I also kind of a sleepy thing. And you must understand that even if they support Ukraine, I think this is very wrong. They are a product of 20 years with propaganda from the East, from Kremlin, who slowly put some marks there. So it's a lot of things to explain that it's not like this, it's like this. Yeah, so you have to combat that, the effect of propaganda. Yeah. But now, uh, you think that the majority of your countrymen understand what's going on here? Yeah, I think they understand what's going on, but not the full scale of it. Okay. Look, let's switch now to your great project. Yeah. Your name is Harold. Yeah. And tell us about a Norwegian king called Harold and uh -huh. his connection with Kyiv. What is this project that drives you so much and connects you also to Ukraine? Yeah, it has two sides, but, but the story is about the greatest Viking king of all time. His name is Harald Harada. And he was the guy who traveled the world to become the most successful Norwegian ever, regardless of time. Uh, and uh, he was here for several years. He was in Busan for several years. And he was here in Kyiv. Uh, yeah. That was Yaroslav the Wise at that yes, time. Yes, that's true. He come here 15 years old after he lost the battle with his brother on Stiklesta and he come down here and took hire as a mercenary in Yaroslav's but uh, army. Tell me why Kyiv? Were there connections, uh, Viking connections with Scandinavia? Yeah, there was. Uh, his brother, Olav, was the brother-in-law of, uh, of um, Yaroslav the Wise. And you must remember the guys before him, uh, Volodymyr the Great. When, the, when his father died, Volodymyr the Great went to Norway to seek support and come back with the army of Arangians and took power in Kivru. So the connections are So enormous. his name was probably Valdemar, not Volodymyr. We called him King Valdemar, yes. And Olga was probably Helga. That's right. Ivan was I Ivar, if I'm not wrong. So the, the Vikings, the Scandinavians, the Varangians, they were here in force and helped 
Kiev and Rus to, to become the uh, conglomerate state that it became? As far as I discover, it's like the Varangians come down there and merge with the East Slavic people and they created this, I will call it an empire. Kiev Rus back then was an empire. It was the third or fourth most powerful nations in Europe thousand years ago. So Harald Hadrada wanted the hand of Yaroslav the Wise's daughter. Yeah. And did Yaroslav give his daughter away to him? In the beginning, no. Harald was 19 years old. He came to him and asked, I want to marry your daughter. And Yaroslav didn't say no. He said, I have great plans for my daughters. You think I want to marry my daughter to you? You have no crown, no money, no throne, no money, no, no future. Harald get disappointed. Can I say straight out, he got really pissed. So. Pissed off <laughs> is the English expression. Pissed is drunk, but he okay. may, as a Viking, he may have been pissed as well. Okay, <laughs> yeah, they were. Pissed off is the expression. So what, he, he then went and fought as a mercenary for the Byzantine emperor. He took his men, like three, four hundred men, went south and, and, and went into Varangian guard in the Byzantine, Byzantine Empire and had an enormous success. He was even in Sicily. He was in Jerusalem and, and he was in Bethlehem kneeling at Mother Mary's grave 50 years before the Crusaders start. Uh, mm. He was in Syria, Sicily, Bulgaria, Africa, all over. Then he returned after how many years in Byzantium? Like nine. And what happened in, in Kyiv? He returned to Kyiv, richer than anybody in north before him. He was personal friend with the Empress Zoe, with the Patriarch of Constantinople. He was like, he was 28 years old and probably a living legend. Uh, and now, of course, Yaroslav said yes. So he said, yes, please take my daughter. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and of course, um, of course, I think this is a point. We think everybody married out of connections and power. Harald was in love with Elisaveta. I mean, he, he had been in love with Elisaveta for many years. Do we know anything about her? Was she good looking? Her personality? What, 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 was it just because she was the daughter of Yaroslav or you said they were in love? Do we know anything about them? We don't know about, I don't know any about, about, the, about how she looked, uh, but she probably was very, very beautiful. Uh, she was also, uh, they say she was a woman or young woman who spoke her mind and that was something Harald really appreciated because the Varangians did that. Now everybody in Ukraine and in France know mm. about Anna Yaroslavna, mm. the daughter of Yaroslav that became the Queen of France. Was she younger or older? Uh, Elisaveta uh, was the oldest daughter of the oldest. Uh, oldest daughter of Yaroslav and Inger of Sweden. And we also must not forget Anastasia, who became queen of France, uh, queen of Hungary. Really, really. Okay, so they returned to Norway. Why was uh, Harold so important for Norway? What did he do apart from being a, a warrior? I will make it short. For the first two hundred years of Norway, um, we had kings, but they, the, all the earls and rich people, said, "Okay, you can be king, but I do whatever I want." Harald come back with a lot of money, a lot of power and the most respected warlords of Europe at the time. And he said, no, either you're with me or against me. I want to be king here and I want to be king and rule everything. And he, to do that, he had learned in Byzantz and in Kivrus, to do that, you need cities, you need administration, you need uh, money. So he established the Norwegian bank, you can say, and stuff like that. Uh, so what he have learned, for his, like, say, 15 years uh, in Kiev and Byzantz, he took back there. So I will say it like this. Norway, modern Norway, is formed after the picture of what they have learned here in Kiev and in Byzantz. Wow. And not many people know that here. No. And, and that's because of propaganda and fake news and everything that has gone through hundreds of years and still continue today. So very briefly, where did he meet his end? I'm from Britain, yeah. so I know, but tell, tell our viewers where he met his death. He met his death, he was 51 years old and he think he could claim the throne of England. So he sailed over the sea and he had a 
after a, I have to say that he had a, a successful battle at Fulford Gate at 21st of September that year. And then 1066. 1066. And four days later, it was the terrible battle at Stanford Bridge where he met uh, Harold Godwinson of England and he died there. And, and this was... Saxon prince, king, also Harold, then yeah. rushed down to Hastings. Yeah. And everybody knows that he died fighting William the Conqueror. Yeah. Now, William the Conqueror was also a Norseman, a Viking. Yeah, um, <laughs> really? Most English people and Americans think that uh, William was a Frenchman. No, he was a uh, descent from, from, um, from um, Gangrolf, we call him. A Norwegian Viking come down to, to stress France. And in the end, he was allowed to have um, a piece of France, who today called Normandy, means so Norseman. So from Norseman, from Norseman. Norseman. And he is, I, don't, I think he's the great, great grandson of this guy. So he also a Norwegian more northern guy. Okay, Harold, now your project, <laughs> briefly, what do you want to do about this? Okay, so you, this is a fascinating story, but you, you're intending to, to uh, you're a filmmaker, I yeah. said, mm -hmm. in Norway, a mm -hmm. documentary filmmaker. What do you intend to do with this material? I would like to do uh, a historical documentary uh, with uh, a docudrama thing uh, for at least 200 minutes to describe this life of Harald Harada because it's so uh, fantastic and it has directly link, directly links for today when it comes to this with fake news propaganda who has the truth all this because a lot of people during the centuries have rewritten the history to justify their own wishes to take land. Uh, Putin, President Putin did that in 2021. He re rewrote the whole story about the Slavic and the Vikings and everything so he could fit his agenda to grab land around in, 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 in post-Soviet. Uh, and it's going on all the way. So I think this link today and back thousand years is, is really connected. And this this is the most important thing we can do today to fight. And the connection between uh, Norway, uh, Sweden, Scandinavia generally, and Kiev and Rus, yeah. uh, forgotten, but uh, unjustly so. But it's not really forgotten. The, the historians know about this, but the broader public doesn't know it. So we should make a series that is so interesting that my sister is not interested in history, want to see it. Finally, so where are you at at this stage? I know you've been in Kyiv several times, apart from your missions with humanitarian assistance, you've been trying to line up uh, things for this project. Where are you at? Have you made progress? We make progress, but COVID set it back. Uh, the full-scale war set it back. Uh, of course, money is always a problem. Um, we have done a promo film about it. We have done um, the first half uh, manuscript of the first pilot episode. And we have done some um, progress with, with uh, people who want to work together with us. Uh, yesterday, I was in, two days ago, I was in a meeting with Sus Pilne. And they are really, really interested in this project. So we have to wait to see a little bit what that, that brings. But it's a project who should interest most of television stations in Europe. Yeah, well, you've certainly interested us in Kyiv Post. <laughs> I've been speaking to Harold Umland, uh, a Norwegian documentary filmmaker uh, who has been playing a very important exemplary role bringing uh, humanitarian help to Ukrainians uh, during wartime and who has this fascinating uh, project of telling us about the ties between Kiev and Rus and the Viking world a thousand years ago. Good luck in your projects from Kiev Post. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.